Hello and welcome to the next lecture. In the last lecture, we talked about how the light actually propagates through the tissue and gets absorbed within, within the tissue. Uh, there are various tissue constituents like lipid, collagen, uh, bilirubin, uh, melanin, and all of those constituents are responsible for the absorption of the uh, photons within the tissue. Uh, today, we talk about uh, the other property of the light that is scattering. Uh, we will see that how light does not only get absorbed while it gets interacts with the tissue components, but there is also it gets scattered. And scattering is one of the uh, significant uh, phenomena that occurs while the int uh, light interacts with the tissue. <coughs> so, as we talked about earlier, uh, tissue is a turbid media. That is, it has a lot of different constituents. It has cells, water molecules, lipid, collagen, and other collagen features as well. Now, let us talk about scattering. Now, when the light interacts with the cell, now let us go to a microscopic level where the cell is included of many uh, uh, small bodies like uh, now what you see over here, it's ATP molecule, it could be a Golgi apparatus, it has a nu its own nucleus, so all of this, its own uh, uh, cell constituents within itself. Now, the light which interacts with, uh, let us assume it as a single photon light, it interacts with such uh, cell constituents and it actually scatters, it scatters in all the direction, it scatters with the forward direction, that is known as forward scattering and it also scatters in a backward direction. Now, uh, <coughs> all of these constituents are defined by a material property and that is known as a refractive index. Now, based upon this refractive index, as you see over here, it will define how much it has to scatter, right, based upon the Snell's law, for example. So, eventually, it's uh, in uh, inside, it's, if it is a semi-transparent material, it will be actually uh, refracting, uh, ref ref um, uh, reflecting based upon the uh, Snell's law <coughs> and Fresnel's law as well, yeah. So, these are the different, different tissue constituents and its own refractive uh, index. Now, uh, there are a few principles based upon which it may scatter forward as well as scatter backward, okay. So, that depends upon what are the dimension of the tissue constituents. For example, uh, you are operating at around, uh, around 500 nanometers or 530 nanometers to be precise, that is a green light source. So, I am shining a green light source on uh, my tissue. And my tissue constituents, let us assume a, a hypothetical case where my tissue constituents is like uh, only having particles of around 50 nanometers. That is around 10 times of dimension lower than what I am operating with, right. So that the scattering that will occur within this tissue constituent would be a Rayleigh scattering, okay. So if the particle dimension is like less than around 10 times uh, uh, than the operating wavelength, then we will get a Rayleigh scattering. Now, I, I will talk about what does it mean by Rayleigh scattering. Let us first talk about what are the things that may occur once you have a light which is propagating through the tissue of different, different uh, tissue constituents with different, different uh, dimensions. Now, assuming, assuming that a hypothetical case where my uh, tissue constituent have particles of approximately similar dimension of what I am sending my uh, light source of, uh, the wavelength of the light source of. In that case, it will be a my scattering. Now, in other case, the third case where the particle dimension is like very, very big as compared, very big means uh, when I am talking about relative to the operating wavelength, right. For example, again I am shining a green light that is around 535 nanometers and I am shining into a a box which is having particles which are having dimension of more than 1 micrometers, okay. Then you get a kind of an op, uh, optical scattering which is having significant forward scattering, okay. Now, this effects, this scattering can be seen in a uh, real life as well. For example, if you see uh, this image over here and or you can go out and in the afternoon what you see over here is that the sky is kind of a blue in color. The question arrives that why the sky is in blue in color, right? So what happens is that this is also shown in a nice video 
uh, over here by the uh, scientific protocols, uh, what happens is that you shine a, the sun is emitting a broad spectrum of light source, which kind of a yellow, uh, white uh, compound light source. And you can see over here, it, it combines all the visible spectra. Now, the atmosphere, your ionosphere are built up of um, particles which are like very, very small as compared to the uh, wavelength that we are shining with. Okay. So, what we actually see is a Rayleigh scattering. So, what you see is that, uh, and Rayleigh scattering uh, is actually wavelength dependent. That is, uh, the scattering is more for lower wavelength. So, it's, it's inversely proportional to the uh, operating wavelength. Lower the wavelength, higher is the scattering. Okay. So, what you see is that the blue color is kind of a lower wavelength, it's around 450 nanometers. And as you go higher wavelength, that is green 535 nanometers, red 660 nanometers. So, the highest scattering is happening in the violet and as well as in the blue regime. And that's why you see the uh, color of the sky to be blue in color. What you see in your eyes, it's kind of yellowish in color because you miss the uh, blue color which is being scattered in the atmosphere. So, if you see the intensity of the Rayleigh scattering, intensity of the Rayleigh scattering is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength. So, that having said, which is around uh, blue color for the sky, uh, but why do we have clouds which is white in color? Right. So, that is one more question that why it could be the, that the sky is blue in color. If you see in the image, the sky is blue in color, but the clouds are actually white in color. Right. So, what happens when the light in the sunlight which interacts with the clouds? So, if you see this image over here, so when the light actually interacts with the cloud, now the cloud, the property of the cloud, the tissue constituents of the cloud is different as compared to the ionosphere, which is kind of uh, far above the clouds. Okay. So, within the cloud, the clouds are made up of many small particles, uh, which are having the dimensions approximately equal to the operating uh, or the sun's wavelength. Right. So, um, and what you see actually is a my scattering. Okay. This is what we learned some time back. So, if the dimension of the particles are almost equal to the uh, wavelength of the incident light source, then you actually get a my scattering. Right. So, my scattering in on the other hand is wavelength independent. That means is that it, it will not, uh, uh, wavelength of different different light source will not affect how much the scattering is going to occur. So, it is an isotropic scattering for all the wavelengths. So, all the wavelengths will scatter equally. And that is why if you shine a red light, blue light, green light to the cloud, it will, uh, it, it will kind of scatter equally. And hence, the cloud is white in color. That is, it is going to uh, scatter wavelengths of each, uh, sorry, the light of each wavelength equally. And that is why you get a compound light source that is white in color. Right? So, that is why what you see over here on the left hand side, you have uh, the sky which is blue in color and on the right hand side, the clouds which are white in color and on the back side that you see is the, because of the scattering from the ionosphere is kind of a blue in color. Okay. So, in conclusion, what is happening is that uh, in the midday, that is in the, in the daytime, what you see the sun is emitting all the visible light source that is red, uh, red green and blue. But the blue light is scattered in the atmosphere, the ionosphere, and what you are able to see is actually the white uh, or yellowish kind of a sunlight source. Now, when we are moving from uh, midday to the sunset in the evening, now in the evening, what, what do we see is that uh, the sun is again emitting the same blue light and uh, blue, uh, green and uh, the red light source. Now, what is happening in the evening is that because in the evening, if you see in the evening, it is kind of what you, you, you are, uh, uh, you can see this is observer and the observer is kind of, uh, uh, kind of parallel or what you can say that it is in tangential 
to the uh, Earth's uh, to the Sun actually. So what happens is that the blue light actually scatters away. Okay, it, the blue light scatters away, and uh, the red and the green uh, light actually uh, scatters inwards within the atmosphere. And what you see is kind of a uh, uh, reddish color in the evening sometimes, right? So uh, that is because. Uh, what you see is over here is that the blue light scatters away and more scattering happens in the red and the green regime and that's why you can sometimes get the orange color while sunset that is a specific color that you will get. So this is when you talk about atmosphere. Similar to this when the light interacts with the tissue you actually get the uh, similar kind of scattering. So now you will see that I am shining a light on my tissue and uh, as the wavelength increases, the scattering actually decreases. Here, this is a graph uh, which shows for different different tissue. For example, skin, uh, subcutaneous tissue, muscle, uh, mucous tissue, brain tissue, cranial bone, and intralipid tissue phantom. This is what you can actually prepare, and we will also show you how to prepare that. <laughs> so, all of these tissue materials, the same kind of a similar property that you can see that the scattering is kind of reducing as a function of wavelength. Okay. So as you go on increasing the wavelength, the scattering actually reduces. Okay. So that is what I wanted to cover about the scattering part, uh, tissue optics scattering. In the next lecture, we will talk about uh, how to understand the uh, various uh, <coughs> optoelectronic components like lasers, LEDs and photodiodes and how to use it uh, because our course is more or less on applications. So we will see how to, how to learn uh, the data sheet and how to use it for building an optical component, uh, optical systems for clinical diagnosis. Thank you.